Welcome to episode number 28 of the Dealers Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and I will be your host for today's show. It is a special show today, and I say that a lot, but I mean it every time. Today we have a guest. I said I wanted to get more guests, and today is the day. We actually have another guest for next week, so uh, really coming through. And actually, there's a lot of similarities between the two guests, um, I guess, in the fact that they're young car guys that didn't necessarily start out as car guys, but um, I think they have some great insight and some innovative input for the audience and for the industry, so I'd like to introduce you to them. Today, we're going to be talking about playing the long game, playing the long game, and I've made some content about this in the past, and I really like the conversation, the direction it went um, with our interviewer, interviewee today. Um, his name is Brandon Wilkinson. And he is a dealer owner in Canada. He also is an author and coach. He also has a digital retailing product coming out. And we're going to talk about all those things. So um, a very innovative, progressive hustler that I'm glad that you're going to get to meet. And he plays the long game. So when I talk about playing the long game, I've said before that playing the long game actually breaks down when you're playing the short game. So for instance, Bryce Harper world-class baseball player, takes like a thousand swings a day off a tee, like a tee ball player, right? It's If you're a great foul shooter, it's the long game being a legacy great foul shooter comes in doing the little things. If you want to play the long game and be a positive person and have a positive legacy, it means in those little situations where you feel like being negative or things aren't going your way, you choose to be positive. And one of the things that I've deployed in my life to play the long game well, or at least better. I guess my legacy will decide whether or not I played played the long game well, um, are reminders. And, you know, I have reminders on my hat, the clarity flag. I have reminders on my computer. I have reminders on my wall behind me. It says, we don't expect it to be easy. And it actually has that same graphic on the side of my car, right? My license plate is a reminder. And yes, sure, it's fun to brand it, and I'm definitely a brand guy and a design guy and all that, but the bottom line is I need to be reminded of what actually matters. And one of the things that we talk about even in the branding and advertising world or even in the human resources world is that playing the long game is a game of cultivation. And you can throw money at things and you can try to like pursue a short-term ROI and you're like, well, it's not working or it's not working fast enough. But I would argue that the real investment comes when you have a long game perspective. So brand building is a long game perspective when things like AdWords is a short game perspective. And when you spend tons of money on AdWords or the new algorithm, right, you're going to spend a lot of money and the ROI on those is going to like be a little bit high in the beginning. And it's going to drop off quick and they have to spend more money and then it's going to drop off quick. Conversely, when you spend money on brand building and legacy messaging, that value continues to grow over time because you're playing the long game. Same thing with your people. If you're developing a company culture and you're not investing in your people and the community and the type of place it is to work and what people think and feel about working there, how they feel about affiliating with your business, then also you're playing the short game. I need somebody in the seat now so they can sell a car or somebody in the seat now so they can write some copy, whatever it is. When you play the long game, you invest in people and over the long term, your retention rate goes way up and your turnover cost goes way down. And I don't understand, like, philosophically speaking, people talk about this, but I've lived it. It's actually true. And so today the conversation goes that way. And we start talking about some of the things that actually cultivate the long game. So wherever you are in your business career, wherever you are in your relationships, wherever you are, uh, maybe in your school career or, you know, just doing life in your fitness, whatever, wherever you're at today, think about the long game. Think about where you want to be, right? Step out of the grind for a second and say, okay, this is actually what I want my legacy to be. This is where I want to end up. And then make yourself some reminders. Put things around you. Listen to things that remind you of that. And that will really empower you to play a better short game because the long game is about playing the short game consistently 
And the short game starts today, and today starts right now. So I hope you join me in thinking about the long game and thinking legacy. So this interview that we have coming up with Brandon, um, he's a long game thinker, even though he's in his 30s. He's a young guy, um, but he thinks with a legacy mindset and he's positive. Um, he's got quite a bit of credibility because of what he's accomplished and a real fun fact about Brandon. So he's in the car business and he owns a dealership and they sell 400 cars a year. Now, 400 cars a year, I know isn't super impressive, but if you factor in the fact that he sells 400 cars a year in a market that only has 180 people in the community, so we're going to hear a little bit of the dynamics about that and actually what he does to conquest customers from other markets because sometimes they're driving like 100 miles to do business with him. So I hope you enjoy the interview. I hope you listen, get something out of it. I am thrilled to get to introduce you to Brandon Wilkinson, um, who frankly, little side, side note, he was introduced to Dale Pollock and Dale Pollock's content through this podcast. So the community is working. People are getting getting introduced to the concepts that are progressive and important and that are functioning. And then they're joining the community and then the community gets sharpened by one another and we get better, right? If you want to play good basketball, you play with people that are better than you. So this community better than me. So it's making me better. I hope that that keeps going, keeps perpetuating. I hope you enjoy this interview with Brandon. Thank you for being a part of the community. Brandon, thank you so much for joining us in the Dealers Compressed podcast today. It is a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Excited. <laughs> so, you know, uh, listeners might not know this, but we already did an interview and we flubbed it on our end. So this is going to be the second interview. So I think it's going to be even better than the first interview. And I'm going to start by saying, so when you say the middle of nowhere in the United States, you know, people think of states like North Dakota and your dealership is in Manitoba, which if you're not familiar with the geography of Canada is north of North Dakota. So I kind of joking around saying, you know, Brandon's dealership is north of nowhere, north of the middle of nowhere. And yeah. um, some really interesting facts about the dealership and kind of what he's been able to do at the dealership is he sells 400 cars a year in a town that only has 180 people. And just a little hint, like everyone doesn't buy two to three cars <laughs> per year in the town. So, um, Brandon, welcome to the show. And why don't you give us like one to two minutes so the audience knows like where you came from and how you ended up in the car business? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. So, uh, you're right. Like we, so like if Manitoba is in the middle of nowhere, kind of or north of the middle of nowhere, <laughs> uh, the town that we operate out of is like really in the middle of nowhere because it's, it's, uh, like we like to say it's kind of out in the boonies like there's a major highway number one uh, highway that goes through Canada and we're off that if you're off number one highway you're literally in the middle of nowhere the in center Canada. of north of the middle of yeah nowhere, right? so we're, we're all really we're nowhere um, so the background on me is like I I really stumbled uh, into this industry I, I wasn't um, a car guy growing up I you know I wasn't uh, it's not like I had car posters on my wall. Uh, I never Me dreamed either. of being in the automotive industry. <laughs> yeah, like anything along that line. So I grew up uh, in a small community, uh, hardworking family. Uh, we, we built uh, stock trailers and flat decks for uh, cattle farmers. That was uh, our main source of income as a family. So in 2006, we sold it. And then uh, for about a year after that, I went and built uh, 400 barrel tanks for the oil field. And then the way our shift worked was I'm sensing a really clear career path here. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> it was all welding. Uh, and when I tell people that I'm a welder by trade, they're like, "What?" Because they only know me as Brandon the car guy or yeah. how you want to. So it's so anyways, you're welding. Cool. So you're welding barrels. Yeah, for sure. So and then a year, I do that for about a year, and then we had four 10-hour days. That's just the way the shift works. So and then every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday we had uh, time off. So on the Friday, I take my my wife, uh, her car in for some service work and I get talking to the, one of the sales guys there, just kind of talking along and communicating back and forth. We're looking at maybe upgrading our vehicle and the way that the showroom worked with the offices is like, it was like a fishbowl 
so like they had six offices in the showroom and they all had windows so you could see inside all of them oh, yeah. just know them well yeah <laughs> yeah yeah right so and then I get talking to this guy and and Troy Stewart, phenomenal person, great guy. So I'm talking to him and behind him is there are four offices with their lights off. And this is, I think, the beauty of intuition. Um, You know, we we hear that uh, uh, instincts are the highest form of intelligence. And and it was it was that instinct that led me to uh, say something to Troy that if I would have never said this, I wouldn't be talking to you today. I wouldn't have a book. I wouldn't have what I have. I love it. Um, yeah. And so what I said to him was like, man, like, I, and you got to remember, like, just picture this, right? So I like, I have dirt on my hands. I have welding scars all over my arms, everything. Like I'm not a car guy. I don't have sales experience. And so I just, I say to him with those four offices with their lights off, I said, man, like if you're looking for someone, I could fill one of those spots for you or fill one of those offices for you. And to my surprise, he's like, yeah, actually, we have an ad out for somebody and done it. And I was like, oh, no, like immediately (laughs) I've done it. (laughs) Yeah. Breaking into a sweat. I got sweaty palms and the sales manager comes over and talks to me. So like unprepared interview, all that stuff went really well. Um, And I think one of the things that that uh, helped a lot was when I like the sales manager was big on work ethic Mm -hmm. and he knew my background a little bit. Our family had a bit of a name for ourselves Mm -hmm. uh, that way in the area. So and then anyway, so uh, I said, you know, how many vehicles does Troy sell in a month? And he said 15. And I was like, that sounds like a lot. Like, I don't know. Uh, And I was like. But anyway, like, so Troy was our top sales guy, and I said, well, if he can sell 15, then there's no reason why I can't either. And that's my whole outlook on everything, right? And that's so, how, you, how you got there. How did you become an owner? So the way that worked was, so I had a lot of success in sales, did that for three years. Uh, and then from that, opened up opportunities. I got into a sales management position, mm-hmm. and then into a general management position shortly thereafter. So at 27... Uh, I was a manager of 55, uh, team members. Mm-hmm. So that was a big undertaking cause I'd only oh, been yeah. in the business for five years at that oh, point. Yeah. So 55 it is a good quick. sized team. Yeah. So it happened quick. Uh, and then, so what happened was, um, call it chance or faith or faith, I guess, or whatever. And so my father-in-law was at a hockey game that he only goes to once a year. And, and the owner of this Chrysler dealership was at the same game that he only goes to once a year. And they just happen to be sitting side by side at this one game that they each go to every year. And, the, you know, it's just weird that they went to the same game. Canadians and they got talking back. Uh, Canadians don't usually go to hockey games. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> There's like literally nothing else to do in the winter. It's like hockey. <laughs> Work and hockey. And so, yeah. And then they got talking. And my father-in-law knew that I was looking for, always looking for ways to enhance my career. And so we talked to the owner of uh, Woodworth Chrysler Dodge. And they got talking. And. And the owner, Don Carter, is like, well, bring him, bring him in. Let's have a chat. And then one thing led to another. And then at 28 years old, I'm a 20% shareholder in a Chrysler company six years after I started. And so that was five years ago. And now I set the company up so that it can operate remotely in Manitoba. And then I live now with my family in Kelowna, BC. We've been out here for about a year. So, so yeah. ownership still 20%? Uh, 80 80. So it's been transitioning from one side to the other. So majority stakeholder. Now, one of the things that I really want to talk about, I think is really valuable for the audience. And and one of the things that intrigued me about you want to talk about a few things you mentioned a book. So I want to talk about that uh, because I know it's coming out soon. And I think there's some interesting things in it. But as automotive, the automotive industry is kind of approaching marketing. And some people are just realizing they need to approach branding and marketing in a different way. Um, your store has like every quintessential disadvantage that people will use as an excuse and you haven't used it as an excuse. And when I say like what that is, it's distance, right? Population density and distance. You don't have a large local demographic. So people actually have to make a trip and find value enough to make the trip to buy from you. And so I want to kind of remove that excuse from some people in this community that may be leaning on that as a reason why. So if you could really talk about what you've done and some of the tactics you've deployed to encourage and entice and connect with people enough that they're willing to make the drive and, and buy from you. Yeah. So good point. Like a lot of people for us, they, they have to drive, like our circumference for uh, our radius for doing business would be 
maybe all of a hundred miles, maybe more. And, that's and like, in that, yeah, in that radius, that's where, yeah. that's, and, and so like, again, we're in a community of 180 people, but we're extracting people from communities of 60,000 and 30,000 mm-hmm. and 10,000 and all that. And they're leaving those towns to come and do business with us. And it comes down to, and we know this, like the client experience. So, so one thing I want to touch on, I'm a big fan of Jason Freed. I don't know if you're familiar with his work, but he, he's, he's the owner of Basecamp. And okay. he's based out of no, Chicago. Yep. Yeah. So he owns that, and and I really love what what he brings to the table, and in terms of uh, how he does business, and he's a big fan of like small businesses. Mm-hmm. Actually, fun fact: uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, owner of Amazon, uh, is a partner with Jason Fried in Basecamp. I did not, not know that. Not not an investor. He's an actual partner, Very which is really and the and the only partner that they have. So that's kind of cool. I did not know um, that. So what Jason shares is like one of the big things that Jeff preaches is focus on things that won't change. Mm-hmm. So what won't change in our industry? We know uh, branding won't change. We know the client experience is always going to be critical to success. Can, can you clarify and, when you say branding yeah. won't change? What do you mean by that? So like, so what I mean by that is um, branding, like whether it's personal branding uh, via the the sales team for yep. the most part or anybody on the front line or the branding of the company. So like, for example, actually I got this from you. It's like, I was talking to Brent Fatelski yesterday at lunch about this. So for those who don't know who Brent is, he's, uh, he's, he's a world-class athlete. He's a CrossFitter. I think he finished fourth in the CrossFit games this year. He's from Kelowna. Uh, he finished second last year. So second fittest man in the world last year. <laughs> anyway, so we're, we were having lunch yesterday and we were talking about this and I brought up your, I brought up your name and, and cause we're talking about branding and it. And that's what he's going through right now is like he, he's trying to create a personal brand for himself. Mm-hmm. And it comes down to uh, the reason why branding will never go away is because it's, it's a feeling. Mm-hmm. And a company needs a feeling to succeed. Like, so for example, so you're talking about us, like, so you're talking, you know, 30,000 foot view, the principles of why people connect, like what it is to build yeah, a good not, brand. Not, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, not, not materialistic. Brand. I, I understand. Like, I, I just yeah, couldn't, so. I, I'm connecting to the dots now and on the fitness thing, yeah. we should talk because I have a good friend who is a CrossFitter oh, and very nice. successful social media influencer. So we should connect them. His name's hey. Eric Hinman. We'll link him up. Um, yeah, we'll do that. That's gotcha. Awesome. So he said, what are the things that don't change, right? The branding 30,000 right. foot doesn't change. Gotcha. Right. So it's like for us, for Woodworth, and I never put the, I never put the dots together until I heard it from you. And it's like branding is a feeling. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh my God, the light bulb goes off. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like for us, our brand is safety. Mm-hmm. It's like, so, so as a, you know, as a team member of Woodworth Dodge or whatever else I have on the go and as a client, you, you can rest assured that you're going to feel safe when you come and do business with us. And so what that's mean, what I like mean define, by that. When you say safe, so um, obviously yeah. there's, there's you know, it's a big investment for people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's like the, the physical safety features of a car. But what do you mean when you say yeah. like you want to make people, you want the feeling they have is safe when they make the well, drive or make the trip? Yeah, it's, tr- it's trust, it's transparency, mm-hmm. it's security. Um, it, you know, effective communication as well, knowing that we have your, your back first and yep. foremost, um, we'll never, for example, with, with, uh, with a team member, if there's an issue in their performance, we won't, you know, we won't hinder it. We, we won't, uh, isolate it down to that particular, uh, performance or what they're doing. We'll actually go and, and be like, okay, is there a personal problem here that we can do? And then we'll have their back that way. And, and that's so what I mean by ability and safety. So yeah. what are some of the, so those are kind of the overarching things that you push and why people connect. And that really makes sense because we know the data shows us that's people expect a hassle there. They, you know, Matt Weinberg was on the podcast and he said, you know, the best word yeah. he ever heard suspect, right? Yeah. People go to a yeah. dealership. How would you describe yeah. a dealer? And they're like suspect. And so yeah. to overcome that with f- people feeling safe and trustworthy makes all the sense in the world. Um, could yeah. you maybe just give us like a minute on some of the tactics that you're deploying, yeah. like, you know, like yeah. boots on the ground, whether it's, you know, yeah. traditional, digital, what, what are you doing? Um, so what we do is uh, we take a bit of a, which probably shouldn't be a unique approach, but it is unfortunately in our industry. And that is, uh, it kind of follows that whole Richard Branson model of like employees first and then. Mm-hmm client second. So yeah, of course the client experience is, is always going to be something that never changes in terms of its level of importance. But even before 
that Mm -hmm. what needs to happen is you need to be able to take care of your team members, make sure that they're playing at at the highest level that they can Mm -hmm. so that they can provide the client experience for you. So uh, by that, so what we've done recently uh, and what we continue to do is uh, we talked about this before, but like, so we just sent a team member to Tony Robbins in Chicago and it was like for the amount that it costs to send somebody to, to Chicago to go to Tony Robbins versus bringing a sales trainer in for three days, it's three and a half days. So for four days, if you were to take those four days and pay a sales trainer Mm -hmm. or take those four days and send them to somebody like Tony Robbins, Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll choose Tony Robbins every day of the week. And that, and that's not a knock against sales trainers. It's just where our belief system is. So sure. Like the level of personal impact that's going to make not just sales impact, but life changing impact. And now you've really created, you know, you've really cultivated someone who is going to just be different overall, but also that's right. going to come out. And the gratitude to you and the organization for giving them that opportunity is obviously yeah. going to spill over in their perception on how to treat the customer and how to relate. So is that, am I, am I summarizing yeah. that right? Bang on, bang on. And, and the, the, one of the coolest things, honestly, was Paul was like, so uh, Logan is the guy that we sent. And, mm-hmm. and then I sent a client of mine as well through my coaching program. Mm-hmm. And, but Logan's a parent and he came out of it as a better parent. That was the biggest takeaway that he had. And so, yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, I mean, you get a rush just thinking about it, honestly. Mm -hmm. And, and if you become a better parent, you become a better leader. And so now we're cultivating a leadership mentality in the organization, even though like, I don't care about titles. I really don't. So it's just so cool that we're developing leaders here and then at some point logan will be here in terms of the hierarchy chain Mm -hmm, right and mm -hmm. work his way up and now we're developing that skill set for him ahead of time so that way when he does go into that role he's fully prepared and so when when you get when you get addicted to personal development and things like that and you it's inspiring and that's the culture you create so i think people i think people attract when you talk about people coming to our dealership they're attracted to that it's all genuine there's nothing pushy about it or, yeah, or it's fake not, about it. It's not as much yeah. a demographic as a psychographic in the yeah, sense of good, people that yeah. just think yeah, about like things that. a certain way, have a certain viewpoint on the world yeah. in general. That's yeah. that's really yeah. interesting. I wasn't expecting that to come come out. But yeah. I mean, granted, that's that's like playing the long game. You know, I think yeah. one of the yeah. things that the industry ignores a lot and I, I see a growing attention to is that addiction to playing the short game, whether that's in spending on your know, programmatic ads or you know, just trying to get somebody in the sales seat, right? That cultivation yeah. over time, cultivation of brand, cultivation of your team, like that's a commitment to the long game that you know up front is not going to give you an immediate, really substantial yeah. ROI, right? But over time, yeah. it grows quite a bit into the sense where then it eventually just has a momentum of its own, like in your culture and in, in the brand awareness and all that. So um, I guess I'm not surprised yeah. that, that uh, yeah, you are, are thinking love, long term and acting long term. I love that you brought up the word momentum because I think it's completely underrated, under undervalued. I, I actually dedicated an entire chapter to momentum in my book, and I call it the three PM rule. But yeah, so well, let's talk about the book for a second. So, well, like, no, like so, it, yeah, yeah. I guess I wasn't trying to pitch it. No, but no, like, but I, I wanted to go to that next anyway. So uh, I do want to touch yeah. on it. So it's a good segue. So in the book, why don't yeah, you just talk sure. about what you call it in the book? Yeah, so the the one chapter that I have dedicated to, uh, I have one chapter dedicated to momentum, I have one chapter dedicated to self-awareness, I have a chapter dedicated to finances and financial intelligence, mm-hmm. uh, provide resources for uh, entrepreneurship, uh, fitness, uh, nutrition, all of these factors. Wow. Like I'm a big, I'm a big fan of like the intangibles. Yep. And and their impact on the bottom line. Like we get mm-hmm. so caught up in the tangibles and, mm-hmm. and thinking that that's what's enhancing our bottom line when it, when it really isn't the biggest mm-hmm. contributor. So that's where I put my focus. So I'll give you, so to go back to what we're just, just briefly for a sure. second to kind of sure go for it, try and finish that other sec, uh, other question was like, so no, we don't look for immediate ROI, mm-hmm. which is probably backwards to the majority of dealers. Right. Sure. So, we, but we play the long game. For sure. We've been in this community for 33 years and we are thriving. We're not surviving like we are thriving. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, we've had a 61 percent 
growth in the last three years with our new vehicle sales volume. So it's increased through the roof. Our net profits have tripled. And when I say net profits, I, I don't like the word revenue a whole mm-hmm. lot. It's like, I want to know the real number. I don't right, care. Right. Yeah. Like, give me the real number. So I'm a big fan of like, what's our customer acquisition cost? What's our profit per team member and things of like that? Like, those yeah. are the things that matter yep. to me. And so um, that's all growing. But what's really, really, really cool, and this plays into the long-term ROI, is that with our 61% growth in the last three years, um, first of all, NADA has said that the uh, average cost to get a cost client acquisition cost it, uh, for dealerships is $600. Like that's how much it costs yep. to get a client yep. in the door. Industry package. benchmark, yeah. Ours is 247. That's and we ha- impressive. With, with a 61% growth. So what does that tell you? It's it, it's telling you that these relationships that we're building along the way um, are developing a repeat referral culture. So yep. that's where we get our business from. And so we don't have to go out and chase clients. They're coming to us, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Like we're not chasing them. It makes, they're, no, they're it makes us. all the sense yeah. in the world. And I'm so glad you're talking about it because yeah. I think the industry needs to hear more of these stories. Because yeah. it's it's yeah. real in this situation. Like it's not philosophical, right? That's one oh. thing, you know, although I do function as a consultant sometimes and so do you. Um, yep. There's there's an element of consulting. I saw a great poster before. It said, you know, if if the problem can't be solved, there's great money to be made in prolonging the problem. You know what I mean? Or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I get and, it, yeah. And I think that some consultants are irresponsible in the sense that um, – they're just philosophically giving things that they've never done or they've never seen. And it, it's not tangible. It's not real. Like, and right. so when you come at it from this direction, like this is tangible, you're not saying you yeah. should do this because I believe it's true. You're saying you should do this no. because I've proven These it's are the true. results that I've, yeah. That so, and received. I think the more we talk about that in the industry in general, um, same thing with the advertising industry, you know, so yeah. the yeah. more th- that we talk about that, the better, because, the metric that matters is like your ad spend per car should go lower. Like it yeah. should go down. If it's not yeah. going down, then the agency isn't doing their job. So like right. that's as an agency, like I don't want to talk about impressions. I don't want to talk about bounce rates. I don't want to talk about any Irrelevant. of that. Irrelevant. Like, Irrelevant. Yeah. Th- those in micro maybe can be relevant or indicative of a bigger problem. But really in the end, it's like, yeah. what are you spending for advertising per car? And the other yeah. metric is like, how many cars are you selling? Is that number going yeah. up? So I yeah. love that element of so, the conversation. Yeah. And then think about what that does to the stress level and the level of fulfillment within the organization. Absolutely. Too. It's, it's like you're dealing with friends now. You're not, Absolutely. the trust is already established. It's Which like you segues don't have into to keeping hurt. employees and segues into being a great yeah. place to work and retention and hiring in the tight job market. Like it, it really yeah. does. It's like, it sounds like the book which is called yeah. Rethink Selling, correct? Yeah. So correct. the book yeah. title is Rethink Selling. We'll link up something to the book. I know it's not out yet, but we'll figure out yeah. what best Come link on. to put yeah. is. Um, and I know you write on it and you're on social media, so we'll link it all yeah. up. Um, yeah. The element of just a holistic approach. And in the yeah. margin compressed environment that dealers are in, and we talk about it a lot on this podcast anyway, um, it takes a holistic approach to solve margin compression because you're not going to fix it by focusing on one area. Like you have to focus on people. No. You have to focus yeah. on brand. You have to focus on getting your ad spend down. You have to focus yeah. on F and I. Like it's holistic. So I'm really excited for the book. I'm really excited to read it. Um, yeah, awesome. And uh, so one more thing I want to touch on before we go. Yeah. Um, and sure. I don't know how much you can talk about this, but you know, you're in a you have your hands in a lot of things, and one of those things yeah. is something for the automotive industry that's coming out. Um, that I don't even know how much you can talk about or what it is, but I can tell dealers that you're going to hear about it. So I don't know yeah. if that's too much of okay. an intro for you or not. Like, I can't talk no. about it. So I can't. Yeah, no, it's all good. And I appreciate you bringing it up. It, so I can tell you the name. The name is called Bids Auto. Okay. And I can tell you that we're going to be launching in Canada, uh, primarily in the Okanagan Valley, uh, beta testing with dealers next month. Awesome. What I, what I can tell you is that as a dealer – um, there are certain areas that I get really frustrated with. So this is, uh, this is my way of solving that problem and also staying ahead of the curve a little bit because I know, like we know that there's, you can feel it in the air. You know that there's disruption coming to mm-hmm. our industry. You know, it's going to happen. 
And uh, it's just a matter of like what that is and when it comes. And with Bids Auto, that's what we're providing. And so I'm super excited to like get it. Like I hate to leave you with that, but that's where it's at. And I'm super excited to get it out there and, and uh, get it in the hands of dealers and, and into the hands of the consumers because it's an extremely – transparent way to buy a vehicle and source out a vehicle and all that good stuff. So yeah, excited. That, well, good. That's more than I thought you'd be able to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Um, yeah, I'm sure you. we'll have you back. Thanks for being part of yeah. the community. And uh, I'm just excited to introduce the community to you because yeah, thank you. I mean, positive, you know, we're big on positivity in general. You and yeah. I are kind of the same in that. Um, yeah. But I do think like conversations like this and people hearing stories like this and encouragements like this is how how we're going to get better as an industry. So thanks for yeah. giving us some of your time. I know you have a lot going on. Yeah, thank you. I'm super excited for what you're doing, man. Like all the power to you. I'm uh, I'm a fan, fan of the show, fan of what you're doing and fan of Pat and, yeah, <laughs> and all that stuff. So. That's behind the camera. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brandon knows that Pat does most of the work around here. <laughs> it's all good, man. Thank you. Appreciate it, dude. Good to see you. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. So thank you again for listening to episode 28 of the Dealers Compressed podcast. Brandon Wilkinson, positive force, hustler, overall good guy. I hope you learned something. I hope you were encouraged by him. And again, I hope you're encouraged by this community and this content. I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll share this content with those friends of yours that need that positivity and progressive thinking in their lives and their careers. Play the long game this week. Actually, play the long game this year and this decade and this rest of your life. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next week. Did I just say watching? Thanks for watching. Talk to you next week.